Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have finally decided to post a video on my daily routine. <laughs> I know some of you guys have been asking for this video and to be honest it is well overdue so I'm hoping you guys enjoy this. Now before I get started and show you the actual footage, I just want you to bear in mind that there's going to be a couple of points that I continuously emphasise throughout the entire video because I just want you to, to keep it in your mind that not every day is the same because as with everything in life things will change so if i have appointments if i have any unforeseen circumstances that occur if the weather's not as great or i get into another job or a child's born or whatever it is there's always there's always a change in, in circumstances so just bear that in mind but as of now as the routine as it is today i'm going to show you how i'm following my structure as of now and how it pans out so you can get a brief glimpse of how my routine works and how it is to have a doberman at home that's got basic obedience etc uh with that being said let's get straight into it i hope you guys enjoy so my alarm clock i.e the baby usually wakes me up between 8 a.m and 8 30 p.m so usually that's when i get my day started soon as tux hears me move or a sound he starts sighing or making some sort of noise so i notice that he's outside <laughs> so I'll just quickly jump up, whip on a top and attend to his needs. So we don't have tucks in the bedroom. Usually I let him sleep outside on the landing here. But this night I didn't. I kept him in his little room. So what I usually do is make my way downstairs. Or if he's already on the landing, I take him downstairs with me. I go to his room. Before I let him out to do his business, I usually get him to sit in one place. Just to ensure that he's going to listen to me and follow his basic commands now here's one thing to bear in mind the weather now watch t watch his behavior here he sit he stands there looking at me before he sits down and stares at me even more because what he's trying to say is hurry up and get ready i want to go out <laughs> so that's what he wants so if the weather's clear like this and it's nice usually i tend to just lock the door leave him to do his business and get a bit of fresh air whilst i move on to the next step but if the weather's not good usually tux wants to come straight back in as soon as he's had his potty so just keep that in mind. The next step is prepping his first meal. Because when I give him his first meal, which is a frozen block, it takes him a couple of minutes, well, five, ten minutes to get through. That gives me a chance to go and get freshened up and just clean up a little bit. So it just keeps him a little bit occupied. Now, as I'm doing this voiceover, I'm in the middle of changing his diet. I'm currently changing it, so I don't want to give you misleading information. But when I recorded the video a couple of days ago, I was still giving him his three meals. As of tomorrow, I'm going to be switching it over. So obviously, I'll make an updated video on that. But sticking to the raw diet, let me just tell you what I've been doing. So there's three meals that I still tend to give him. I should be giving him two, but there's a lot of people that still choose to give three, which I decided to do. Now, it's important to bear in mind that you can't just stick to one protein. You have to give him all five proteins, I believe it is. There's difference in just giving him just like, let's say, just chicken or just beef. I give him like his proteins, but I also give him the tripe or the liver. So he's getting um, the, the right sort of nutrients, etc. Now, during each meal, there's three stages, like I said, three meals. I give him three meals and each time I add in one of these supplements. Once the meal's prepped, I've brought him back in and I've put him into his little room while well, under the stairs and move on to the next step, which is feeding Lily. This little scav does my head in. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I come to feed her next and then obviously move on to the next step after that, which is sorting myself out. Now, the first thing I'll do is obviously go to the toilet and relieve myself. Yes, my morning piss. Don't mock it, guys. You asked for this. Clearly, I don't do no cooking at home. So the next thing I'll do is quickly hoover up the house for my missus or just tidy up a little. After I've brushed my teeth and sorted myself out a little, it should be near enough 9am. So I'll turn on my work phone, check all my messages, then get onto the laptop, check all my emails and start planning my day for what I need to be doing for work. Whether it's a busy day or not, I have to make sure that I plan it out. So this is what I'll tend to do before I actually start doing my work, is I'll make a proper plan for the day. After that, that's when I'll give myself a moment to go on my social media accounts. I have a little nosy on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever else. Um, go on YouTube, check if there's been any new subscribers or comments. But you know how it is. Everyone's got to check the social feeds, right? <laughs> but luckily, I don't do this first thing in the morning. I give myself a chance to come around first. 
and then it's time to get dressed. Now on the floor I have my dog clothes or scruffy clothes and then on the racks I have my clean clothes. Now depending on what type of day I'm having, whether it's going to be a dirty day, depending on the weather, depending on if we're doing a full on training session, then it'll, I'll decide what type of clothes I'm going to wear. Usually whether the weather's good or bad, I then tend to clean up the dog muck in the back garden because I just don't want the garden smelling like poo or wee and to be honest with you sometimes Tux does accidentally stand in it so if he's running around or playing or something so I don't want him standing on poo and then bringing it in from his paws and spreading it all over the house it's kind of gross so I usually tend to clean this up as well before I start making moves and going out we then get Tux ready to go out now I'm not bandaging and posting his ears as much now because they're doing pretty well to be honest with you but I still do him here and there just to keep it up a little bit just to give it a little bit of support now usually before I go out I do usually take them off because it's not that I'm bothered about people's opinions it's just I just can't be bothered with the headache and the hassle and sometimes it's just you just want to go out and enjoy your time having your walk you just want to be focused without everyone staring and making negative comments so I noticed I've noticed from my experience that when I've got his ears posted that's when we do usually get more negative comments and people staring but when they're not bandaged we get a lot more compliments so it's just easier for me anyway then off we go on our first walk usually I go to the local park or a local field where I can do our training or playing with him that's our go-to but I'm quite spontaneous so some days I just feel like going to the beach or going to a nature reserve and I do take him to random places but in general this is our go-to and our local so again I want you to bear in mind the weather so I don't always go out for hours and hours Usually I spend about an hour and an hour and a half with him. But if the weather's not the greatest, he doesn't want to stay out. Um, obviously, I don't want to be out in the rain as well. So the max I'd usually stay out then is about 30 to 45 minutes. Give him enough uh, time to chill, burn off his excess energy. And then we usually head back. But when we usually get to this field or park wherever I'm going, as he's got a lot of energy, I tend to play a little bit with him first, make him run around, burn off his excess energy. And then I'll start doing a little bit of training with him. Not every day is serious training commands. Sometimes we just go out to play and chill and bond. And during them sessions, I do just get him to do basic basic things like sitting down and lying down, giving me his paw, etc. Um, and obviously, other days, we do take the training a little bit more seriously and I don't get as playful. But yeah, that's something to bear in mind is obviously the weather because, like I said, if it's raining, he doesn't want to be out as much as I don't. So I got him a new toy, a flint pole, whatever they're called. It was recommended to me by one of my friends who's also got a Doberman. And I've got to be honest with you, this is probably one of the best investments I have ever made. He was right. My mate kept telling me to get it over and over again. He was repetitive and I wasn't listening. I was just prolonging it. But Tux goes absolutely crazy for this toy and he won't stop. The best thing is I can just stand in one place and make him run around, go crazy for literally 10-15 minutes and he's got slabber coming out, out the sides of his mouth he really enjoys this toy um, in the middle of playing I can get him to just stop and do these commands and make him do extra things which he usually wouldn't be as attentive with so it's a great investment um, like I said my mate recommended this there's two other things that I've learned from him which I'm going to be making a separate video on that and informing you guys how to keep your dog on a good walk because i've watched loads of videos about walking your dog heel getting him to heal and walking at the side but to be honest with you i've been struggling with that since day one and tux is still tugging a little bit he's still hard work so there's a two things that i've invested into which has been really helpful thanks to my mate again amir so i'm going to make a separate video on on that soon and i'll keep you guys posted on it after he's finished playing and he's burnt his energy out i'll take him to the pond which is obviously close by let him drink a bit of water or if the weather's bad I just take him straight home and I'll let him have a drink of water then. Next is home time. When we get back I usually put him in his little room or in a little cage or wherever whilst I crack on with some work. I'll sit down on the couch or at my desk upstairs and just get on with my work however long it takes. Sometimes it's an hour, sometimes it's two. Um, sometimes obviously it might be staggered so I have to work for about half an hour 40 minutes and then I have a break for 10-15 minutes and then I get on back on with my work it just really depends on my uh, caseload etc 
let me just show you where I keep tucks whilst I'm working. Can you see that crate there that we just walked past? It either be in there or is going to be in his room. At this point, because I've already taken him out and had a bit of fun with him, he'll be completely silent and satisfied with just chilling on his own for a bit. Like I said, if the weather's good, it always depends on the weather. Look at this video here. He's sunbathing outside. So if the weather's good, then I don't mind just leaving him in the garden and he's, he's happy to just chill. As you can see, he's comfortable with that. If I've got any appointments, depending on how long they are, I usually take tucks with me and just leave him sat in the boot. Um, on this occasion, I don't have any appointments, so I'm nipping to the raw diet shop to get his food, but I usually tend to take him with me. This is one of the shops that Tux is allowed to go inside, so I do usually tend to take him inside, but today I haven't because I'm trying to record. Um, I'll pick up his food, I'll let, him, uh, get, I'll let him get a little treat or two, and then I'll get him weighed on the scales just to see how much he weighs. We then either make our way home or I'll nip to my mum's on the way and just show my face and let on. Once I'm back, ensuring that I've completed all my work and I'm on track with everything, if the weather's nice, like I said again, I usually go out on a second walk with him. But this time I'll take my missus and the baby. But on this occasion, my missus didn't want to come. So it was just me, the baby and Tux. But it gives me a chance to bond with my daughter as well as my dog. But on this occasion, we just go for a simple walk and just keep it nice and chilled. As you can see, he's walking nicely at the side of me and I've got my hands free. This is one of the things that I'm going to be talking about on the next video that I do. Talking about this halty lead. And I've also got a prong collar now, so I'm going to be talking to you about the benefits of them and showing you how to use it properly without actually hurting the dog. So excluding the travel time, once we get to the park or wherever we're intending to go, I don't spend more than 30 minutes this time around because I don't want to give him too much time. Then every single day he expects the same because to be honest with you, I can't commit to that. So that's what I tend to do is just give him at least 30 minutes to play, chill, smell, sniff, whatever he wants to do, and then we head back home. By now, it should be time for his second meal. So I usually feed him this between half five and half six. And the supplement of choice that I'll add in this time would probably be a kefir piece. And I'll also crack in an egg or two, because at the moment I've got a lot of eggs, so I'm just letting Tux make use out of them. So yeah, I'll crack them two in as well, and just let him munch. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, I never give Tux his meal for free. Meaning I won't just go and give him the bowl and just let him eat. I'll always get him to do some commands first. That's period. I always get him to do that. Because when he's hungry, or when I've got a bowl of food in my hand or something that he really wants, that's when his attention is on me like a hawk. And I mean like a hawk. So before I feed him, every single time, I'll get him to do some basic commands. And just make sure he's staying obedient. As you can see from this clip, he's smashing every command first time. After he's finished his meal, if he's outside, I put him away. Or if he's already in his little area, I just leave him to it for a couple of hours. And it gives me a chance to just spend some time with my family or put my feet up and chill, really. So, yeah, I always aim to do everything by 7 p.m. latest. That takes us to the evening. I usually give him one last walk between 11 p.m. and 12 a.m. It's always just a casual walk, nothing serious, no mad commands and bare playing. It's just usually a walk. And then I tend to take him home and just give him his last meal. And that's about it, guys. Um, obviously, I've not added in little details like eating and having a shower, <laughs> going to the toilet and the rest of it and praying and stuff. But yeah, you can fill in the gaps for yourselves. But I've just shown you a basic outline of the things that I do. Um, I hope you guys have found this video helpful or useful. If anyone's got any comments or recommendations, if there's anything specific you'd like me to make, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I've got two updates on the videos that I want to be making. One, obviously, is getting him to walk at the side of me and not having him tugging. And another video I want to make is an update on the raw diet, which is obviously something I'm changing. Anyway, you know how it is, guys. Subscribe to my channel. Leave a thumbs up. Hit the bell for any notifications. And until next time, over and out.